Lemon Amiga Present A Play Child Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Once again, welcome to another play guide and review by Lemon Amiga. This is the final one in the series, and this is Ghouls and Ghosts, developed by Software Creations and published by US Gold in 1989. This is a version of the Capcom original, which came out in the arcades in 1988. It came out on two discs, so let's press that space bar and check this out. begins with an arcade a track like sequence although it isn't quite like the arcade machine as we shall see High score table, we can also see the programmer David G. Broadhurst and also the graphics Andrew R. Frelfall and the music was by Tim Foley. So you can see, even though this has an attract sequence, the arcade was certainly better on that front. And we'll be comparing the arcade graphics in this review. is one of the very first games that I owned on the Amiga. This very first game I played, or one of the first, and so let's press fire and let's check this game out. The very first thing I'm going to do is to type in the cheat code Karen Broadhurst, and that will turn on invulnerability, although not unlimited lives. From the start of the game, definitely the music by Tim Fallin is the most memorable part of the game. The Amiga version is fairly faithful to the arcade, although the arcade has slightly more going on and slightly more vultures. Definitely the arcade graphics were impressive in 1988 and it would take until 1992 before the Amiga got arcade quality graphics with the AGA machines and they could definitely do these kind of backgrounds although we've definitely seen games on these play guides which did go to some lengths to create these kinds of graphics on an OCS machine. This game is very difficult and I would have died a million times if it wasn't for that cheat. Unfortunately, when we collect the armor, we won't turn nice gold color, so compromises definitely have been met with the arcade version, and the arcade also had branches as well, which 
leaps out to try to grab us, which are not on the Amiga. And what the Amiga does have is infinitely respawning bushes which fire skulls towards us. So it's got the weapon collectibles and the power-ups as well. And the pigs are definitely impossible on the arcade and on the Amiga version. So you'll definitely be sinking lots of axes into them. But the worst part definitely are these plants. Because when you destroy them, all that will happen is it will respawn another one. If you climb the ladder, it will get you before you've got to the top. If you try to destroy them, it will simply respawn another one. So definitely the hardest part of the Amiga version is this very first level. And if you can somehow fluke your way past this and through this and manage to kill him, then it's possible to get to the end of level boss and simply jump over his firepower. And even though this game is usually pixel perfect and it doesn't have any compromises when it comes to these jumps and usually if you're going to die it will kill you about now if you don't absolutely clear these jumps but if you can do that and if you can make it to the very first level unscratched then there's a very good chance that you can get through most of the game from here Let's compare the arcade version and the Commodore 64. You can see the arcade version has a map at the beginning of level 2. See, they've really tried to cram in as much of the arcade version as possible and I think this is a better conversion than Ghosts and Goblins that we got and Paperboy and Bomb Jack and an infinite number of other games like Last Ninja 2 and every single thing virtually that was converted from the Commodore 64 except for the direct conversions of course like Aztec Challenge and Popeye so back in the day I had this on the original box and it was one of the first games that I played. I had Mercenary and Barbarian 1 and games like that. Really old games and ports and conversions and games that weren't really great graphically on the Amiga and games that, like Terrapods that I didn't even understand how to play it. And I think I also had maybe even Last Ninja 2, I can't quite remember. But let's just say that this version, this game, was graphically superior to anything that I'd seen on a Commodore 64 up to that point. And so looking at this coming back from a Commodore 64, it didn't have virtually any disc loading compared to the hefty multi-load of the 64 version. And that was definitely a godsend, and these graphics were a dream, even though you can say that they're a 16 color, or maybe even a 32 color conversion from the ST version. It is possible with enough practice to memorise these levels and to avoid these difficult areas and I think I have managed to get this far but it is very difficult you can see I'm struggling to even hit the enemies before they've hit me and usually they'll hit you in any case so this has got the arcade mode of difficulty and it's one of the very 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 few Amiga games that I still have to play with the infinite well invulnerability on otherwise it's too frustrating but I have a great time playing this and if I do I put the invulnerability on because it's got the arcade difficulty <laughs> This was one of the very first games that I saw that had one of these scrolling sections and it might remind people of maybe Turrican 3 or something like that but back in the day I hadn't actually seen this type of gameplay on a game before and again if you memorise these enemies it is possible to get through this and to have fun on this level. This 
music, I think, comes from the arcade version on level one and on the title music that is definitely unique to the Amiga, and that's one of the things that sends chills down my spine and shivers because that intro music is phenomenally well done. You can see it's phenomenally difficult without that cheat on, and you also have a time limit as well. 1 minute 30, I think I've got left on this particular version, and the time has just increased. when I had this game, the smell of the Amiga and the load of the Amiga and the LED lights on there and the shape of the Amiga and the feeling of putting the discs in and clunking and clicking and auto-loading discs without having to go into an operating system and things like that. The Amiga was light years ahead of itself and it felt like maybe even a console game, it just booted up in seconds it felt like. and. With the Commodore 64 you had to wait maybe minutes it felt like, maybe even five minutes just to get to a title page. So this thing wasn't arcade perfect, it never was, but to my mind it was, and it was a valiant attempt, although again programmers in the 90s managed to get much more out of the hardware by programming it specifically, and these backgrounds maybe we had to wait until 1992 for the AGA machines to come along. But in any case, for me it felt like a great arcade conversion, definitely off the back of Bubble Bobble, and it was certainly better than Bionic Commando, which I think I had as well, and some pretty flaky Commodore 64 conversions. This game was programmed by David Broadhurst, who also coded Bubble Bobble for software creations in 1988. He then moved on to LED Storm, Slice by Secret Agent, which is a fantastic game, I love that game, and unfortunately Bionic Commando, and then he coded Assassin and the Special Edition for Team 17. And he was aided by Andrew Threlfall, who also helped with LED Storm and Slice Spy, and also uh, Bionic Commando, and also the music Tim Fallin. And again, he created LED Storm music, Slice Spy music, and Bionic Commando. <laughs> From the first level, this one is definitely the hardest level, you can see the enemies respawning directly under our feet on the floor, and you have to be ducked, and you have to trigger those off in advance, and you have to know that they spawn because you can't jump up, otherwise you'll hit your head on the spikes. So you have to be running backwards a lot on this level, and if you jump backwards you'll jump into the spikes. So even though I tried to jump upwards to avoid whatever that was, it actually jumped backwards. And this is the second hardest section in the game, and so you should be able to get some, well I managed to get through to this on my longest play, and if you can, without doing that, and again I turned around and pushed upwards and it jumped backwards. So up to jump is a bit difficult, I would not recommend up to jump, and it's very difficult at the best of times. I think you can simply run forwards and fall down the gap in front of that hand without having to kill it, I'm not quite sure, but I think on this version, well, there, let's see, no, there are spikes there, but if you run forward into the first gap there, here, then you can just go under it, so there are shortcuts, and if you memorise them, it's not a hard level.
Right at the very end, the arcade gives us worms and hard things to kill, but on the Amiga, it's very easy. You just jump up and kill these things as they emerge out of these eggs, and eventually they'll even stop respawning on the Amiga, because, well, it was a rushed conversion. So that was what they said on Lemon Amiga, it was a rushed conversion, unfortunately, and that's what spoils it. Definitely this game brings back great nostalgia for me when I had a CRT TV, a 15 inch colour TV and that meant that these graphics look even more impressive and unfortunately we lose that technology and no matter how much you can put scan lines on things and screen shading and things like that it's never ever going to be as good as an original CRT TV. So here we are and I think this is the last level and on the original arcade version it forces I think to play the entire game twice so we'll see how far we get with this and usually it's well back to the impossible pigs and this section reminds me of is it level 2 of the original Ghosts and Goblins with things flying in left and right and impossible pigs waiting for us at the top of ladders and it's impossible to climb up those ladders and kill those things before they've turned around and killed us. So there are some impossibilities and some unfairnesses and some stupidities as well. You might notice the enemy simply walking off the platform and running straight through that level. So it is impossible without that cheat on. It wasn't play tested enough and they didn't even try and that's what they did in 1988. They just pushed things out in time for Christmas and that's what we got. But definitely playing this with the cheat on, I'll always remember the Karen Broadhurst, which was probably, well, Andrew Broadhurst's sister or his wife or something like that. And it's those cheat codes that I remember you didn't have to type porks in or anything like that. You didn't have to press the system reset button and get back to DOS and hack away at the machine. You could just type something in on the Amiga and it would automatically cheat for us. Taking a look at those scores, Amiga Format gave this 91%, but it reduced that to 54% for the re-release, so going from Immaculate to Humbrum, and Amiga Action gave this 83, but dropped it to 68 for the re-release, Amiga Joker gave this 74, Amiga User International gave it 80, Joystick Magazine gave this 85, Zap also gave this 85, the Amiga gave it 81, but actually increased it to 93% for the re-release, saying this contains six of the best tunes you'll ever hear on the Amiga. And the game's machine gave it 92%, which if you add them all up and divide it by 11, it gives you 8 out of 10. The only thing that spoils this is the playability and the replay value. It's definitely not the music, and the graphics have definitely seen worse graphics on an Amiga game. It's not Woody's World, it's not Lionheart, it's not even Turrigan, but for 1988, well, 1989 when this thing came out, it was okay, and I still call it this thing because, you know, it is a travesty that we got these types of conversions on the Amiga. And it is, it is a travesty that this is the best one of them, even though this is very poor and unplayable. And it's full of bugs as well, and corruptions. And even on this version, the end of the was corrupts, I think. And you can see it's disappearing there at the edge of the screen. Looks like we've died on the Amiga, so let's use up a continue. Unfortunately, it means it looks like we're going to have to start that level all over again. So 
this is the final review of the series and I didn't expect to be making this review because I thought that I had enough games covered already but unfortunately not so I had to record this footage and this has been narrated late in the day in well the 20th of February so only a couple of weeks before release and so this has been a great series, I've really enjoyed a lot of the games. 1000 Melia is a fantastic game and quite a lot of the ones that I've covered already, definitely Hilsey Lido I enjoyed and Amber Moon as well. In fact it's a very rare game that I haven't enjoyed this series, perhaps Stratego is the only one that I didn't particularly enjoy even though I beat it but all the rest definitely it's been worth it. Some of those have been great play guides and definitely things like well infestation definitely needed a play guide all of its own and games like that really shine on the Amiga. We'll be back next year or well later this year actually September if you can wait that long for some more play guides and if you want to keep in touch with us and keep abreast of everything that's going on next series. I won't give them away in advance, but if you do, for as little as one dollar or one pound, you can join our Lemon Tube Amiga Patreon scheme. And over the summer, I'll probably be delivering some more videos, and you get to find out what's going on next series as well. And if you contribute at a high level, I'll even review a game of your choice. And the game of my choice is this one, it's a Nostalgia Fest, one of the few games from back in the day that I haven't reviewed already, and I even had to use the cheat to get through it. But this is the easiest boss in history, you just blast it away, and once you get rid of it, it comes up with some really tremendous music, which I'll let play to the end of this film. So thanks again for watching this series, and we'll be back once again in September, hopefully for another one. So see you sometime soon. Thank you.